everyone, and welcome to the August edition of the Poker Brief. I'm Kara Scott. August is generally a slow month for the poker industry after the marathon that is the World Series of Poker. I mean, hey, everybody needs a summer holiday. But this year, poker producer Supreme Mori Eskandani and Poker Central decided to drop a little midsummer's present in all of our laps. Brand new episodes of the cult classic TV show, Poker After Dark. They kicked things off with three days of my favorite of the formats, the cash games, and then at the end of August had three days of the winner-take-all sit-and-go format with buy-ins of 25k and 50k. It was like nostalgia palooza as they brought back big names from the heyday of poker and that familiar soundtrack of Ali Najad's voice calling out the action on the background of chip noise was like coming home. You know, if home is a high stakes game where multi-millionaires risk huge stacks of money on the turn of a card without even seeming to blink an eye, homie. Drea Renee was a great new addition to the show, taking over the hosting duties and the very, very tough job of pulling aside players to interview them mid-game live. It wasn't all positive though. I don't know about you, but it was a bit unsettling for me to see the kid brother, young phenom, upstart of poker Tom Dwan with um, some gray hair. I mean, how fast did this past decade go? Way to make us all feel our age, Poker After Dark. Thanks for that. Another clash between some big names happened in August during the King of the Hill event at the Rivers Casino and Resort. It was a four-person, heads-up, no-limit hold'em special for Poker Night in America. Each player put up 50k to play, and it was a winner-take-all format. And it was an interesting lineup. You had Dan Jungleman Cates, known for playing and crushing nosebleed cash games, facing off against Frank Casella, World Series of Poker Player of the Year in 2010, who, by the way, also won his third bracelet this summer. And then two players who are no strangers to our screens, both TV and computer, who also featured heavily at the break desk during the World Series of Poker live coverage on ESPN and Poker Central this summer. This was the matchup that a lot of people really wanted to see. Doug Polk, YouTube and poker star with the 2017 One Drop title under his belt, faced off heads up against he who has the most bracelets ever, Philip Jerome Helmuth Jr. And what a clash it was. Not even his bad reg t-shirt could save Polk as he lost out to Helmuth. And then it was on to the final, Jungle Man versus the Poker Brat. All in for this new title and a shiny belt. It looked like Dan had the decider sewn up with a huge chip lead over Phil, but somehow Phil dug deep and managed an epic comeback to win it and shut down all the haters. Okay, maybe not all of them, but I mean, you can't have everything, Phil. Congratulations on the win. And more in TV poker news, which somehow also includes Helmuth. Phil has joined the WPT broadcasting team. This is an interesting turn, as the WPT Raw Deal segment was originally created to highlight new talent way back in 2010, when poker pro Tony Dunst came on board through an open casting call for the ninth season of the WPT, and then quickly made the segment his own. Tony proved himself so quickly and so well that he's now moved into the commentary booth following Mike Sexton's retirement after 15 great seasons left a very big chair to fill. But back to the original point of the story. Good luck to Phil Helmuth in his new role with the WPT as the host of the Raw Deal segments. I just hope he'll manage to find the ability to say what he really means when commentating on poker. I mean, we all know he can be a little bit shy sometimes. From TV poker to live poker, August had a lot to say for itself. The Poker Stars event in Barcelona made the biggest noise last month with their national championship offering a 4 million euro guarantee, which they covered with 4,557 entries. Altogether, it made for the biggest live tournament attendance in Poker Stars history. With such big numbers, they're doing some creative work on how to accommodate these kinds of crowds of players now and in the future. They've been looking at reducing the gap between the starting days, obviously having differing level lengths for different starting days, and as head of live poker operations, Neil Johnson told Poker News, they're even considering playing down to the money on day ones, which is something that the WPT 500 has employed with success. I wasn't able to attend Barcelona, but I am looking forward to the upcoming 8 at 8 Live Festival, which is coming to Sao Paulo, Brazil this month. I think the next edition of the Poker Brief might just be actually all my holiday snaps. I hope that's okay. Now, Brazil is one of those places where enthusiasm and excitement for poker is huge and still on the rise. 
I'll be joining some of my 888 colleagues and some football legends as well, that's soccer for you in North America, to check out the poker scene, meet some of the passionate poker enthusiasts there, and play a bit of the game as well. Satellites for the main event were online at 888 Poker, so we'll be seeing some of you there for sure. And finally, Poker After Dark and Barcelona, they weren't the only games that people were talking about in August. 888 Poker finally launched their new product called Flopomania, which they said allows players to skip to the action by removing pre-flop play. No more raise and take it rounds as the action starts with the flop already open for all the players to see. It was launched towards the end of August to record numbers. It falls into the category of the non-traditional poker offerings on 888 like Blast Sit and Goes and Snap Poker, but the number of players trying it out on the very first day it was offered saw a more than 50% increase from the first day of Blast. And there was an 11% boost in the number of total players online for 888 as well compared to recent Sundays. As a game, it's for action players who, you know, just hate the feeling of seeing that they would have smashed the flop after they've already folded pre. And that's it for me this month. See you back here next time for more on the Poker Brief.